In this video, I'm going to show you how to do association mining, uh, market basket analysis. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up Jupyter Notebook, the home page, and then we want to click on New, Python 3. And I've already started some code here, um, and I've already imported the, the data set. So the data set is right here. Um, the link to it is on the UC Irvine website, and it's got uh, a huge Excel file um, and before you run the algorithm you want to make sure the link works so let's make sure that works and it just downloads the file when you copy that link in so the link is working and it pulled down the right file so let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like the first part before we get into the association mining is we're going to clean the data we're going to clean it up just a little bit. So let's uh, look at this data set. And let me zoom it out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. It's a massive data set, so sometimes it takes a little time for it to process. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the, the data into a table. So I'm going to click on cell A1 and I'm going to hit shift control and then the down arrow and then the right arrow. I'm going to go up and click on format as table in the home tab. And I'll just pick, you know, one of them. Okay. And then hit OK. All right. Then it kind of widens the uh, columns out automatically with the exception of description here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sort. With this in table format, I can, I can sort A to Z. And I can see if there's any issues. Like, for example, there's an issue with this one, right? We're going to filter that one out. So I'm going to make a note of that. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in a notepad. Okay, so we're going to filter that out. And it looks like we have some spaces, leading spaces. So we need to strip spaces. We'll call it leading and ending spaces. And then we kind of scroll through it to see if we have any other issues. Oh, looks like we have some more issues here, right? We have some question marks. We have an asterisk, so let's make some notes here. We have to filter out these asterisks, um, question marks, and then what else? It looks like we have invoices that have C's, starting with C too, like right here. So we're gonna filter that out. That's a credit um, invoice. There we go. Now, do we have anything, do we have any special characters in here? Looks like we don't have any special characters here. Let's go to the end now. Looks like we have some blank descriptions. So we're gonna filter them out too. Maybe we'll just do this. We'll do control shift and down. There we go. So we have a bunch of blank ones too. So we'll make a note over here. We have blank descriptions. Okay. And let's go filter. Uh, we'll go ahead and filter invoice number. Or not filter, but sort it. Smallest to largest. Looks like it's fine there. So we're not, it looks like we're not missing any invoice numbers. Okay, let's do a stock code too. Let's just sort on this real quick too. 
smallest to largest again. Oh, so we want to get rid of these postage ones here. So let's get rid of postage. We're going to sort them out too. Samples, postage. Manual. So we got manual. And we're gonna we're gonna spell it and capitalize just as we see it. We had samples. Looks like we have well We'll, fil we'll filter out the dot com postage with postage. Looks like discount. We need to make a filter on discount. Amazon fee. Uh, looks like adjusted bad debt. We need to filter out. Bank charges. Carriages, probably a product. We'll leave that in. Crunk commission, crunk commission. Discount, we got discount. Don't know what that is. We'll filter that out. There's that. We're going to filter that out with the word postage. Oh, we probably need to filter that out too. Dot com gift shop gift voucher. Okay, I think we got all that. Um, so let's go back to our code. Now that we have a pretty good idea of what we need to filter out. We'll go back to the code here. Now I've read the data set in, so I'm going to go ahead and hashtag that out because I might repeat this input box a lot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the names of the variables. So if we look at this, we're going to change capitalization is important in Python. So we're going to change invoice number, stock code, description, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to use all lowercase letters. Um, we'll also get rid of any um, spaces, special characters. So we're going to use one line of code to clean up um, the titles of these columns. OK, that's what we're going to do here. So we got. Uh, data.columns equal data.columns and we're going to strip any uh, spaces before or after uh, the variable's name and we're going to use that off we're going to use that again in the future we're going to strip we're going to um, convert all the letters to lowercase and we're going to replace spaces with underscores if there's any and then we're going to replace any special characters like parentheses with nothing. So this, there's nothing here. So we're replacing this uh, parenthesis with nothing in this string. And then we're also going to replace the close parenthesis. So this is probably just a generic line of code that we use to clean up our variables. Okay. 
So we'll go ahead and hit enter here. And then I can print, I can print the data down here. So if you look, we've cleaned up the variable names there, right? They're all lowercase letters, okay? Because again, Python matters. Now that, this is why it's really important to hashtag this read because this takes forever to read in the data from that Excel file. So I've hashtagged that out. Once you read it in, you wanna hashtag that out, okay? And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And this right here is gonna print um, the column names. Okay, so for I in data columns, it's gonna print what I is. So data.columns is the name of the columns and it's gonna print each one out here, okay? So there we're just verifying again that um, we cleaned up the variable names, right? Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna kinda of get a feel for how big this file is. So the first one is the row and column counts, right? Um, and the dimension here is the data dot shape. So dot shape gives you the number of rows and the number of columns, right? And the next one is the count of unique invoice numbers. So data dot invoice no dot number unique, right? So this is number unique. Okay. And this, so this is a uh, a column, right? That's a column in this object, this massive data table. And this is an object that's in this table, right? So this has a very SQL feel to it, right? And this is gonna give us the number of uniques in each. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit uh, control enter here to run it. And you can see that we have 541,909 rows of data. And then we have eight columns. And then we have only, we only have 25,900 unique invoices because um, each item on a on an invoice is a different row in our data set. And then we have 4,372 unique customer IDs. Okay, so we have repeat customers, right? We have repeat customers. If we didn't have any repeat customers, this number would equal that number, right? And if there were just one product on each invoice, these two would equal each other, right? All right, so I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna hashtag out the column names so we have pretty, since we have an idea of what those are. I'm gonna hashtag that out. And then I'm gonna write more code. Okay, these two lines of code drop any missing rows, right? So the axis means rows. Axis equals zero means rows. And our subset here is invoice numbers. So this is gonna drop any missing invoice numbers in data. So I'm gonna hashtag out this first line of code. And we didn't have any missing values in the invoice column. So we shouldn't have a change in the number of rows here. Okay, so we just verified that we didn't have any missing uh, invoice numbers. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, drop any uh, missing row, any rows that have a missing description in them, right? And you'll see this number change down here because we observed that when we looked at an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so it dropped about uh, more, it dropped about 1500 rows, right, of missing descriptions. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to um, convert if they're not already strings, but I'm sure they're pretty, I'm sure they're strings. But we're going to convert invoice number and description to strings, right? So this is going to take the data, the invoice column and data, and it's going to convert it to a string, right? So this is the column in our data object that we want to um, turn into a string. And I'm pretty sure Python has read it as a string because there were some C's that preceded an invoice number. And then the description 
was filled to string. So I'm sure that this is not going to have any effect. Neither one of these is going to have an effect on our data set called data. So I'll go ahead and hit Control Shift Enter. The next thing we want to do is we want to we want to strip uh, we want to strip any spaces that precede a data description or end a data description. So this is going to strip any spaces before or after a string in the description column. So we'll hit uh, Control Shift Enter there, right? And it's not going to delete anything. It's just going to strip um, leading spaces or ending spaces from the strings. And then what we want to do is we're going to replace asterisks. We're going to replace the asterisks with um, nothing. So we're going to get rid of the asterisks right there. So this is in the description column of data. It's going to replace, string replace, an asterisk with nothing. Okay. So now let's go to our list here. So we've gotten rid of uh, the asterisks. We've gotten rid of leading and ending spaces. And we've gotten rid of blanks. Right, we've got rid of blanks. Okay. Um, we're going to replace the question mark with a funky set of characters here. So whenever we see a question mark, we're going to replace it with that because we know that's not a product name, right? That's just nonsense. That'll help us delete the question mark when we get ready to delete the question marks. Okay. All right, so let's start deleting some columns here. Um, we're only gonna look at, we're gonna delete the credit and um, bad debt adjustment columns. Okay, we're gonna delete those. So this is gonna taint, this is gonna delete an invoice this is going to delete a row that contains an invoice number that contains C. Okay, this little tilde here is the complement or the opposite. Okay, so what's going on here is um, data invoice dot string dot contains C, right? If we didn't have that, what would happen is we would keep everything that contains a C. So we have to put a little tilde in front of that to tell us we don't want, we want everything but the stuff that contains the C. And the same thing is going on down here. So if we got both, if we got rid of both of these, data would end up being um, a data set where the invoice numbers start with a C or start with an A. So that's why we have to put a tilde here. We want the opposite of that. We want to delete the things that contain a C or contain an A in invoice number. And this A precedes uh, an adjustment to a bad debt, right? So A precedes the transaction number of an adjusted bad debt. So we're going to delete both of those. And then we should probably see this number change dramatically down here. So we're going to hit enter. Right, so we're, now we're down to 531,000 rows, right, roughly speaking. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we're going to get rid of anything that says postage. So dot com postage, right, anything that says postage that contains postage because we had we had the dot com postage and then we had just plain postage, right? So we got rid of that. We got rid of adjusted bad debt. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this one. Now we're down to 529,000, so we're cleaning this up pretty good. Now we'll get rid of that one that had a, the number 20,713, 
right? Remember that one? We're going to get rid of that um, row that contained that as a description of a product. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of the ones that say manual. We're going to get rid of the ones that said manual. And the one that said sample. We also the one that said sample. So now we're down to 528,000. And then we're going to get rid of the one where we changed the question mark to that funky set of randomly picked characters. So we got rid of the question mark with that one. We got rid of samples. Okay, so now we need to get rid of discount. Transactions that say discount. Amazon fee. I'll just go ahead and um, take care of all those at the same time. So we got rid of the, we got discount, we got Amazon fee, we got bank charges, eBay, and then we'll do We'll do one more here. Dot com gift shop. Or how about just gift voucher? We'll just do gift voucher. Okay. So this is just cleaning the data. This is a large part of what you do in the private sector. You gotta clean the data up. You don't want these things uh, messing up your analysis. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And now we're down to 5,280, 528,862 rows of observations, right? Okay. Um, let's find out if the number of unique invoices changed and um, so we're gonna we're gonna find out if we had a change in the unique number of invoices and customer IDs okay so we lost a couple of unique customer IDs a few of them and we've lost a few invoice numbers and most of those if you remember are either bad debt adjustments or um, credit transactions because we're not looking at credit transactions in this analysis okay now what we also want to do is we want to figure out what kind of countries we have in here we want a list of countries and so we're going to run a code a for loop to give us that So this right here is country, right? So in the data set, in our data set called data, in the column named country, we're gonna look for unique values. So it's gonna drop any duplicates. And this right here is the length of that unique list of countries. We're starting I at zero, and then for nation and country, so this is a list of names, and this is, say, the first nation, the first time through the list country. The second time through is the second country listed in the list country, et cetera, et cetera. And this prints what I is, it starts out at zero, and then this will print that name of the nation each time through the loop, and this just increments I. Okay, so the first time through, the first country is the United Kingdom. That's country zero. In a Python list, the very first thing in a list is always in a row zero. 
The second country is France, and that's in the row number one, row named one. It's actually row two. Then Australia, and then all the way down to, um, I guess it's Russia. And this is Malta. Okay. All right. And then the last thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and save this data to the CSV file. Let me scroll up to the code input box. So this will save it to, um, it'll save our clean data set as data.csv, okay? And then we can go to our homepage of Jupyter Notebook in Google Chrome. I can click on last modified twice, and there's our data set. Let's just look at it. We'll go ahead and open it up. Let me download it. it takes a while. So again, it's a massive data set. Okay, so this is a CSV version of that's been cleaned up. And then I'll convert it to table format again. And then I'll click this right here to automatically widen the rows. Or the columns, I should say. Okay, let's kind of click on, let's sort by uh, description, sort A to Z. And it looks like our leading spaces are gone, which is good. From the looks of it, it looks like we've done a pretty good job of cleaning the data. I'm just gonna scroll through it pretty quickly. So I think we're good to go on cleaning the data, right? We can uh, check other things. Now, the reason why we're cleaning the data is because if we have a lot of missing values and we have a lot of uh, things like credit adjustments and discounts and whatnot that aren't related to the transactions we're, that we're having with regard to products that we're selling, it'll make the data set extremely large and it slows down the algorithm. But because these anomalies are probably so small in terms of, there might not be very many um, with mistakes in the description, um, they'll have a very low frequency, relative frequency. And they're gonna be ignored in the analysis, if you will, anyway. But what we wanna do is we wanna clean it the best we can so that maybe the algorithm is not running so slowly, right? That's essentially what we're doing here. Okay, so let's order that and just kind of look to see if there if we see anything that's obvious. Uh, we could do unit price, smallest to largest. It looks like we have Amazon. So we also have damages. So if we want, we could, we could make a new list of the, we can include these in our list and filter a little bit more if we wanted. But there's only one or two of these, right? Perhaps. We might not have all these customer IDs filled in too because uh, maybe our customer IDs are our regular customers, right? And the ones without customer IDs are probably customers who have used this once or maybe do a guest checkout, right? So if we're gonna do any more filtering, um, we could do a little more filtering and maybe call it good, but I think we're pretty good right now. Oh, here's one here, to push order through a stock. Through, uh, 
Yeah, that's just nonsense right there. Okay, so let's go back to our filter, our cleaning, and we'll 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 do a couple more. We'll do a couple more here. Okay, so we're gonna do Amazon. Actually, I'm not gonna do Amazon because we might have a product with the word Amazon in it. I am gonna do damages. Um, I'm gonna do push to push order. I don't think we have a product named that, but we might have a product with the word Amazon. And then I'll do check. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and leave check. I only we only saw one, and it might show up in a different uh, in a different row. So let's do that. I think these are pretty obvious ones. So we'll go ahead and run this again. Okay, so I think we're good to go on, on the data cleaning. 